Hey everybody, Dan Jones from St. Anne's Catholic Church in Grant Pass, Oregon. Come on, guys, not again. Seriously, you haven't like said anything the whole time I've been in the office. And then as soon as I go live, okay, you, you know what? It might be Friday, but we're having chicken tonight. No, I, we're, they're not even very big. They're just... Okay, so this is sort of an impromptu uh, uh, live stream. Um, I'm not intending on uh, doing any theological teaching tonight. Uh, however, uh, if you did see the indulgences video, thank you for watching that. Send me any questions you might have. I'm toying with the idea of the next um, lesson being um, uh, purpose related to holy orders and marriage. Uh, our two vocational sacraments in the Catholic Church. Um, if you're interested in hearing me talk about that for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, send me a, a message and I'll definitely throw something together and chit chat about it. What I wanted to talk about today, because it is Friday and yes, Fish Friday during Lent, uh, uh, but prior to the current crisis, Friday nights are typically family nights. Play uh, a PlayStation game. Um, an appropriate PlayStation game. And that would be kind of like a movie because I like a lot of those video games that are story, story driven, story driven video games on my PS4. But lately we've been playing a lot of board games as a family and it's been fantastically fun. Shout out to Iguana Comics and Games uh, on 6th Street in Grants Pass. Carl Callahan is a friend of mine and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Iguana Comics. Just came there. Uh, just came from there this afternoon. He is still open. Uh, you can do curbside pickup if you already know what you want. Um, they can swipe your card uh, right there. Uh, but he's also doing what a lot of the stores in Grants Pass are still doing. Uh, throw some gloves on, go inside. Uh, they have gloves available. And concierge service, basically trying to keep the traffic down to like five people at a time. Um, and, you know, they're being very accommodating, and it's awesome. So check out Iguana Comics. He's got, he's got tons of games. There's a current comic book crisis. A lot of you people don't know this because you're so focused on viruses. But far worse than the virus is the fact that there are no new comic books coming out right now. Yeah. It, yeah. No, I'm serious. No Marvel, no DC, no Image. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, go ahead and Google it. I'm not going to get into it in this video. But, uh, yeah, probably little little did most of you know, um, no comic books right now. No new, floppy, serialized comic books right now. And it's, it's a tragedy, believe me. Okay, so games, game night. Uh, we've got some fantastic games that I want to introduce you to. Uh, I, I got a stack of them right here. You can't, like, well, wait, can, you, can you see it? Yeah, so, okay. Um, you can get all these games at uh, Iguana Comics and Games, and I encourage you to, or Amazon. You know, if you don't want to leave the house, good for you. Stay home, stay alive, uh, or lives. Um, so, but real quick, I just want to run through some of these for you because you might not know of them or maybe you do and you just never thought about playing. We love all these games and, and they're tremendously fun and they're relatively easy to learn. So, um, okay, so real quick, Trash Pandas, 15 minutes or less to play. Um, I think up to four or five people can play at a time um, or as little as two. This is a great, great little game. Um, think, um, think, uh, uh, Exploding kittens, where you know every card is kind of funny, um, and at the same time, um, hmm, winning like winning tricks uh, in euchre or hearts or spades. You wanna you wanna hold some cards in your stash in your trash stash uh, to score some points and then win. And there's all kinds of funny little uh, funny little takes on the rules. Trash Panda is, is a great game with the kids. My kids love it. Judy plays it with me. Okay, so uh, a friend of Abby's had uh, introduced her to something called One Night Werewolf. Uh, ages on that, I think, are 13 or 14 and up. Kind of scary. Don't know. Haven't seen it. Didn't buy it. However, uh, we did buy One Night Alien and One Night Vampire. Not scary at all. Very funny. 
tremendous app associated with this. In many ways, you don't even have to read the rules. You just follow what the app says, and it's lots of fun. And a typical game takes maybe less than 10 minutes. Um, now, you can't cheat. This game actually requires players to close their eyes. I know, right? Uh, so if you've got like a little seven-year-old that kind of likes to look in between his, you know, his fingers just to maybe see who the vampire is, uh, yeah, it, it might not work. Um, however, if everybody's, you know, playing honorably, these games are fantastic. I, I think we all prefer One Night Vampire. So if you're only going to get one, uh, I would suggest getting that. Again, uh, Iguana Comics and Games or maybe Amazon. I don't know. Um, three to ten players. You can actually mix them. You can actually uh, uh, put the cards together. And if you're using the app, uh, play Aliens and Vampires. I think this, these games are better with five or more players. Um, less than that, it doesn't really work. Ages eight and up. Eight and up, another one. Very fun. Okay, the kids love this game. Absolutely love this game. You know, I, again, interdimensional portal thing. On my screen, it's backwards. I'm hoping that it's not backwards for you. Otherwise, yeah, I, I don't know. Sheeple? Sheep, see, my screen, sheeple, your, your screen, I, I don't know what this is. Sheeple is a, a really entertaining game. Um, the, the basic concept is get around the board as fast as possible. Um, first one uh, to get to graduate university, uh, university, you get it, the, uh, um, wins. Now, the, the hilarious nature of this is puns. There's got to be like, I'm more like, bah, no, you haven't. Um, so that's not even a funny pun. It didn't work at all. However, Sheeple uh, is very good for the young kids who can write, who can come up with some names. Now, the, the game says um, 10 and up. Um, does it say 10 and up? I forget. Eight and up. Yeah, eight and up. So my little seven year old uh, plays this with us. And the first couple of times we played, um, he really struggled because it's about go. And then you got to write down as many words that only have three letters as you can. Here's the twist. You're all sheep. You all think alike. You're all NPCs, right? Uh, there's no creativity whatsoever. So you want to write down three letter words. You think everybody else at the table is going to write down. If you get too creative, you won't get points. The idea is to become sheep. Um, or to become human, maybe you are sheep. Regardless, you wanna you wanna be like everybody else with your words to get more points. First couple of games, my little guy struggled with that a little bit. No longer, he's he's very competitive. Not winning yet because you know I, I'm playing and I know a lot of words. I I use a lot of words, and so um, it's difficult to keep up with dad. And then, of course, mom has like 16 degrees, you know, as a doctor and all that kind of stuff. So that doesn't help as much as you'd think, though, because she tends to get too creative. See, I just use the words that I know. She just knows too many words. Regardless, great game. Sheeple, um, I want to say it was like 25 bucks. Um, not sure. Four to ten players, ages eight and up. Super fun game of uh, war and go fish and dragons and dice um, and paper, rock, scissors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very fun game. Easy to play. Does not take very many. Uh, does not take very long. Ages eight and up. I'd say. 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes max for for a game of Dragonwood. Um, uh, very, here, like, you know, it's 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 very innocent. Let me let me show you a couple of the cards here, if I can dig some out. Um, so, like, remember how I said it's kind of like Go Fish. So here's Blue Six Wizard, and here's Green Five Elf. I don't know. Can you see that? Is it too shiny? I don't know. There's, there's a green one elf, um, kind of like paper, rock, scissors. There's monsters. Uh, if you want to use the sword attack on the monster, you got to hit it with so many. If you want to use the stomp attack on the monster. 
I'm going to stomp you in about a second. Seriously. Um, if you want to use this, you know, oh, oh, so, so the dice are actually really cool. They're, they, they almost, I mean, they're plastic, obviously they're plastic, but they've kind of got this wood veneer finish to them. And, and the numbers, the numbers are kind of attractive. I like, I like dice that are, that are kind of unique and attractive. Uh, like that kind of like Dungeons and Dragons dice, I guess. I highly recommend this game for little guys, especially if they like if they like uh, fantasy stuff. Uh, it's definitely a, a kid friendly game, ages eight and up. Uh, yeah, two to two to four players. All right, classic. If you don't, if you've never played Ticket to Ride, you, you like board games. You got to get Ticket to Ride. There's not a whole lot to say here. I mean, I think most of you have probably played it. Um, I've not played it. Don't tell anybody. But we bought it, and the family loves it. But I just, I just haven't played it yet. I, eh. um, so Ticket to Ride, ages eight and up. Uh, it's good for five players, and that's important for my house. Natalie likes to watch. But she doesn't typically play games like that. Can I get it all on the screen? Yeah, there we are. Ticket to Ride. It's a good game. It's a lot of fun. Um, and and because it's relatively common, uh, when when friends and neighbors come over, they'll know how to play it too. Uh, one more uh, big board game like this. <clears throat> and frankly, I don't think it's too early. Um, but a good another big good classic. If you haven't played. Yeah, I I pulled it out. It's it's so much fun. Um, we've only ever played on the easy level. Pandemic. Um, it's a cooperative game, so you're not so you're not trying to beat the other players. You're trying to beat the game and work with the other players. Um, the interesting thing about Pandemic is it's got multiple multiple ways you can play to make it more difficult. Um, I've been told that the the most difficult way to play it's like nearly impossible. It's like you can't beat it. Uh, have not have not played that level before because um, I'm a coward and, and frankly I I don't have the patience to play forever. Um, but uh, pandemic another eight eight and up game two to four players. Um, it takes a little bit longer. I think on the easy level we can get through it in about 30, 40 minutes. Um, but frankly, I mean, if you're not if you've not played like one game of pandemic during all this, uh, you're missing out because it's fun and and it puts a nice little spin on stuff. Okay, so uh, maybe you like those card deck building games. Um, you know, uh, my little kids, my little boys uh, definitely like Pokemon, and Pokemon can be fun. Um, <laughs> my um, my son, my older son. He's uh, watching this cartoon called Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is one of those deck card building games that's just utterly incomprehensible. Um, why anybody would play that game uh, boggles my mind because there's so many ridiculous rules uh, related to the cards. You could have like the most amazing card and not even know that it's got this weakness to green water that has pink algae in it and the other guy played a card that's a water card that can manifest pink i mean it's 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 silly so um pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. maybe you're familiar with stuff like that or magic the card game so um yeah magic magic the card game um i kind of know how to play magic but not really the reason why i've got i've got tons of these um, very inexpensive starter decks that you can get from from uh, Carl at Iguana Comics. He's even got some newer starter decks of Magic for those who are more competitive, who just who who like the the more competitive uh, level of play that experienced Magic players like to play. The starter decks are very very reasonably priced and um, ages thirteen and up, so it requires a little bit more thinking than a lot of the other games that I shared with you. Dragon-esque, dragon-esque, magic-y type stuff. Um, I don't particularly have a problem with that. I know that some people do, and frankly, I don't. I don't uh, uh, judge them for that. It can. Some of these games can get weird if you're not careful. Um, but magic, of course, you can. He, Carl's got tons of this stuff, very reasonably priced. If you want to learn how to play, I su I suggest. 
hooking up with Jesse over there at Iguana Comics, maybe on a Saturday or Sunday when they're open and he can give you some picture tricks. Carl will certainly give you some cards to get you started. Here's an interesting game called Key Forge. Um, very easy game to play. Um, every, every deck is uh, a ready to play. It's a ready to play deck and they're all slightly unique. Um, good price, well priced, uh, 10 bucks for, for a deck. I think um, Carl's got some even newer packages of Key Forge and there's lots of expansion packs and things like that. That's kind of fun. Right here, this bad boy. This is probably Carl's favorite game. I've played this a few times. Um, a year or two ago, I took the high schoolers to Iguana Comics to play Star Realms, and it went off really well. Um, I think that they had a lot of fun. Um, a little more complicated, uh, 12 and up. Uh, a typical hand takes 20, 25 minutes. Um, but uh, if you like science fiction type stuff, John Della Rose, the author John Della Rose, wrote the uh, accompanying uh, novelized version of this game. I'm a big fan of John Della Rose uh, and the stuff that he writes. And so, uh, you, not so cute, right? I know. So, Dungeon Dice is another sort of complex paper, rock, scissors type game. Um, all the cards, there's tons of these cards in here. And, and you, you pick a character you want to be. And they're all, they're all kind of weird and goofy, like the Viking and the Ranger and the Half Goblin. And, and they're all basically the same, just different, different background story, a uh, different name, and a different power that you can use uh, to help you with the game. So the game is based on the throwing of these party dice. You, you create a hero party. There's... There's uh, fighters and mages and clerics and all kinds of stuff. And then, and then the monster die, there's skeletons and dragons and goblins, whatever that's called. And so uh, depending on, and there's a whole bunch of them, right? There's, there's a whole bunch of, ah! okay, that didn't work. Uh, a whole bunch of the monster dice and, and a whole bunch of the party dice. And um, basically, it's it's a matter of rolling the monster dice and trying to trying to defeat all them. Yeah, I'm not doing that again. Defeat all the monsters with all of your party members, and you know, different different party members have different strengths and uh, different characters. Like, ooh, that's he's kind of scary. The undead Viking. You see him? Um, there's there's the dwarf. I like dwarves. I, I'm I'm a big fan of dwarves. Does he kind of look like me? Ah, yeah. That's so. So when you get enough experience, your dwarf can go from dwarf to berserker. And I don't see how he looks any different. Anyway, some of them end up looking different. Um, but so your your character card and your dice roll uh, determine how well you will do in that delve into the dungeon and of course the idea is to win treasures and defeat the dragon if you're confronted by it um i bought this game because it's actually a really good two-person game um but we play we'll play uh four at a time i've got so many other oh yeah and so uh ages on this ages on this uh eight and up another eight and up game so all, all my kids know how to play this all my kids know how to play all these games oh my goodness there was one one more game that i i failed to show you guys this game is so much fun maybe maybe you've heard of dungeons and dragons um it's very complicated it takes forever to play the game never ends uh i i love it but i mean i've got friends who play probably two three four times a month for hours uh you know, every couple of weeks and they've been doing it for years. Um, and it just, it takes, I don't have that kind of time, but I do have time for Dungeons and Dragons, Monster Madness, Dungeon Mayhem. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a card game where um, you get to pick 
what you want to be a monster, a character, what have you. And so like, uh, it's, it's really cute. It's cute here. I'll just show you my little guy's favorite deck. He likes to play. Can you see that? Hoots Magoots. Now Hoots Magoots is an owl bear. You know, what's an owl bear? Well, I, I, the crazy thing about Dungeons and Dragons is they make monsters out of everything. Let's take a little bit of an owl and let's take a bear and put them together. Boom, owl bear. Pretty ferocious. Owlbear has got some pretty goofy powers, though, when he's playing against other characters. For example, uh, each player may do a little dance and then draw a card. And the Owlbear, Hoots Magoots, gets to draw a card for each player that danced. Now, you might think, well, what idiot player is going to dance to give Hoots Magoots a card? Well, you might need a card. And so you know you're going to get up and do a little jig so that you can get a card because one more card might mean the game. Um, yeah, so stuff like that. It's it's really fun. Um, we play that uh, Monster Madness box is like their premium box. This again, I think this is eight eight years old and up. Two to six players. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's it's eight years old and up. Uh, 15, 20 minutes for a game. Tons of fun. Just just tons of fun. You can get that at Iguana Comics. Uh, and games, tell Carl I sent you or Jesse or Cameron. Those guys are fantastic guys. So much fun. Man, I would kill to have a store like that. Well, maybe I'd kill something. Yeah, George, I got an eye on you, boy. I don't even know if he's a boy. He's a parakeet. I, I don't think parakeets are boys or girls, are they? They're like, they're like weird. Uh, anyway, okay. That's all I got for you guys. I just want you to know I love you guys. I hope you're figuring out ways to have fun during this crazy, weird, wacky time. Um, um, middle schoolers, high schoolers, know that I'm caring about you and praying about you, caring and praying. Um, and, and I hope everybody's staying healthy. Um, it's Friday, Fish Friday, not Parakeet, Fish Friday. So be good, you guys. Watch some kind of mass this weekend. Um, pray, tell Jesus that you're grateful for the good things that you have. Um, if you got any questions, you want to, uh, just drop me a line, tell me how awesome I am. That'd be nice. Take care and, and God bless you guys.